Hey, this is Kenneth, and today I wanted to show you the progress I've been making on this Z80 breadboard computer that I've been building. So back here, I've got a uh, CMOS Z80. Next to it, I have a 555 timer set up as just a uh, pulse generator. So each time I press the button, we can do a single clock cycle. And then on the front here, I've built a hand-wired PCB, or this is just a piece of proto perf board with kind of the standard RC2014 data bus here, which is kind of what I'm basing this project on. And then I've got a whole bunch of LEDs set up with buffers. So these are 74, 245 bus drivers that are just hardwired to drive these LEDs based on what the Z80 is outputting. So on the top here is the address bus in yellow. So this is all 16 bits of the address bus. These eight green LEDs here are the data bus, right? And so this is the least significant bit, and this is the most significant bit of the data bus. And then these are kind of the five most interesting flags. So the first green one here is the M1 light or signal, which means this is the, um, the processor is fetching an opcode and is starting a new operation cycle. Um, because each opcode can take many clock cycles. So this indicates when we're starting a new operation. And then we have the read request and write request flags for either IO or memory, right? And so when you're reading from memory, you're gonna see the read light lit and the memory light lit, right? Because you're reading from memory. If you were writing to I an IO port, like a, which is like its own address space, you would see write to IO, both of those lights would be lit up. So, um, as far as what the Z80 is configured for right now, it's literally just hardwired to do nothing. Is we have pull-up resistors on the interrupt line, the non-maskable interrupt line, the reset line, um, the wait line, and the bus request line. So literally everything is just strapped high to disable it so that this processor does nothing. Um, I then have eight resistors pulling the data bus down which is, this is essentially all of our ROM and memory right now is literally just eight resistors that are say, hardwired to zero because zero is the no-op. And so if we look at the Z80 user's manual and we look at the no-op page, you can see that the operation code for no operation is eight zeros, operands, none, the, you know, the description is the CPU performs no operations at all. And then we can see that the M cycles, it takes one M cycle, which is the you know machine cycle. And that machine cycle is only four T states or time states long. And so what this is saying is that the no operation will take four clock cycles to do nothing, right? So if we turn on the five volt rail, um, it's going to it's going to kind of, kind of come up in a random configuration. So the first thing we need to do is reset the processor. And so this is the reset button back here. So I'm going to hold the reset button. And that in itself doesn't do anything. Um, is you actually have to hold the reset button down for at least four clock cycles, which if your clock is running at a couple megahertz isn't a problem. You couldn't push it fast enough to not do that. But since there's no clock happening except for when I press the clock button, there's one clock cycle, there's a second clock cycle, there's a third clock cycle, there's a fourth clock cycle, and we can just give it a few extra ones just for good measure, right? So now at this point, it's totally reset. And so um, the, the Z80 is in a reset state. These are all probably just high because um, the, uh, the inputs on these will float high when there's nothing driving the address bus. And then if we give it two more clock cycles without the reset, that completes the reset cycle. And so now the next clock the next clock pulse I give it is going to be the first machine state of the first operand after the reset. And so by pressing that, you can see the address bus went to address zero, which is the reset vector. And so when the Z80 starts, it starts reading from address zero and whatever instructions there is what it does. We can see that the M1 light is lit up since this is a new machine cycle and we are reading from memory. The resistors then are pulling everything low. And so we now know that over the next four clock cycles, um, it is going to fetch and then execute this 
no op. One, two, three, four, done. And so now we're on the first clock cycle of address one, right? Because the the processor fetched the, the no op from address zero, um, executed it, which took four clock cycles and did nothing. And now we are at address one because the um, the program counter incremented and it's now fetching the next one. So you can, you can see the machine cycle read from memory at address one and it's zero. Now we're going to stop on the third one here, uh, the third clock cycle, because I haven't talked about this light back here. This is actually the, if you can't quite see it, um, that is the refresh line. And so if we were using dynamic memory, which we're not, um, we're not using any memory, um, but if we were using dynamic memory, you need to refresh all the cells um, periodically, like every every few milliseconds, or you lose all the data in it. Um, I'm eventually going to be using SRAM, static RAM, so this is never going to do anything for me, but you can see that the refresh line is lit, the memory line is lit, but there's no read or write request. And so what the Z80 does is in the middle of operands, in the bottom seven bits of the address bus, so just those, it puts out the refresh register and then tells the DRAM by, by, by making the refresh and memory signals active that they can refresh that set of memory cells, um, right? And so when we're just doing no ops here, it just looks like it's the same address bus, right? But that's, that's what's going on there. And so now you can see that we have started the third clock, uh, the third machine cycle. And so we have again the M1 because we're doing a new operand from address two, right? Address three, do, 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 address four, right? So that's, we can sit here all day um, and have this computer continue to execute um, no ops, but um, which is, you know, pretty neat, right? I mean, you can sit here and, and, and click this and then we can, we can actually, if I, if I touch this resistor, we can, um, it'll pick up noise from my body. And so it is now very quickly um, executing no ops and going through everything, right? So that's that's fun. Um, so let's reset it. Um, but we get, there's actually, I mean, there's there's a whole bunch of different operands that we could hardwire in with these resistors. And, we, and since we can single step it, we could actually step it in, hardwire in one operand or one you know op code, and then we could you know we could continue to run this computer, um, which you know that'd be fun, I guess. Uh, but an easy one to hardwire in would be um, the relative jump command. And so if I pull uh, bit three and bit four high, we now have in hex one eight on the data bus. Referring again to the user's manual, the jump relative is, as you can see, 1.8, and then it has one operand, which is E minus 2. And what this instruction does is it tells the, the processor to, relative to its current location, to jump either forward or back E, I guess E minus 2, um, locations. And so if we hardwire in 1.8, for both the opcode and the operand, what we're really saying is do a relative jump, and then when it fetches the next cycle, um, it's going to see 1, 8, which is um, 8 plus 16, so that's 24. Um, it's going to see 24 minus 2, which is 22, or, or I guess it's uh, 24 plus two, so that's 26. And so we're gonna be saying, do a relative jump forward 26 bytes or 26 address locations, right? And so now if we do the last two clock cycles of the reset with the button released, and then here we are again, address zero, M1, so we're doing a new machine cycle. We are reading from memory and it's reading now this one eight that we 
hardwired in there. Now to predict what it's going to do, we can see that the jump relative command has three machine cycles, 12 T states, so it's four for the first machine cycle, three for the second machine cycle, and then five for the third machine cycle. And then this is the estimated time um, if the clock is running at four megahertz, but obviously um, that clock is not running at four megahertz. And so this is the first T state of the first machine cycle. And we can see again that we're doing a you know M1 read from memory and that two. On the third, we're doing the DRAM refresh, which is pretty much on every M1 cycle. And then that's the end of the first machine cycle. Now, the second machine cycle we know is three, um, three time cycles long, and this is when it fetches the E operand for this relative jump. So now we can see we've gone to address one because the operand is the next byte after the opcode. And we can see that we're not starting a new machine cycle because we're getting the operand for the last opcode but we're reading from memory again. And again, we're reading the same, we could encode something else here if we wanted to, but we'll just give it the same hex 1.8. And that's the second machine cycle. So it's now fetched the jump relative command and it's jumped the argument that we gave to that, which is go forward 24 plus two bytes. And so that's gonna be a jump relative 26. So now the third machine cycle is when the processor internally handles that. And so we need to give it five more clock cycles, three, four, five. And that's it internally incrementing the program counter or, you know, updating the program counter based on the instruction we gave it, which is add 26 to it. And so when it starts the next machine cycle, it's actually going to jump forward from zero, 26 bytes. And so this is again, so, you, so now you can see there's there's the jump forward 26 that we expected. And we're now, again, starting a new M1 cycle, reading from memory. And then since we have, again, you know, our, our whole program here is literally just eight resistors, um, it, it's seeing the same command again, right? Um, and so that was the, this is the, you know, this is the first, this is the fetching the opcode, you know, the second time. But the interesting thing is you'll notice that when we go to the refresh, it actually lights up just the address one. And that's because the refresh register just counts, you know, zero to 127. Um, and so even though we jumped forward 26 bytes, um, the refresh counter is still on one. And so we're, you know, at this point we would refresh the next set of DRAM cells. Um, and then we do the operand fetch for you know, so we're doing the read from memory. And then we do the internal machine cycle when it's thinking about it. And then it updates the program counter and it jumps forward another 26 bytes. So that's that's what we've got so far. Um, obviously this will be more interesting once we've got, you know, RAM and ROM instead of eight resistors. But like building this would be relatively simple. And like if I put toggle switches on it, you could then sit there and literally just manually toggle in. And I think that in itself would be pretty fun. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you, you learned something about the Z80, um, kind of the, the machine fetch cycle. Um, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.